Now, what about uh, working with your property owners? Um, how do you balance the communication with them and uh, really provide good you know, communication, good um, level of transparency about what's going on, and yet not you know, allow them to, to control you and uh, yeah. you know, get in too much into your business? Yeah, and it, so it's, it's the same thing that I was saying about the rest, right? So a, lo a lot of my peers and the way it's been ingrained in all of us has always been, I don't ever want to hear from an owner, right? They better, it's my job to do this. If they go near it, they'll break it, right? I think that's tough for me because I'm an investor, right? And uh, to somehow, you know, say that, that folks like me don't know what they're doing doesn't make sense, especially when the majority of people manage their own properties, um, you know, and, and, and I, I teach those people to manage their own properties and I have no problem with that, right? That... How to, how to do that is difficult. Now, the majority of the people that want us to manage do it because they don't want to deal with things. So it just naturally works, right? Um, and so my job is just to communicate with each owner in the way they want it. And that's tough to do times thousands, right? Right now we're at you know hundreds and it's easier, right? Uh, but to scale that is tricky. So another thing you're, you're trying to learn, right? But we have automatic communications for things that matter. Um, generally, maintenance is the biggest thing with it with an owner, right? It's 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 outflow of money or money not coming in, right? That's the most communication they generally want, like something broke or uh, your your resident didn't pay, right? So we we have workflows to to communicate that part, um, and then the more and more as we grow, as as people realize, like in, we want to help this be an investment. It's doing the more proactive of hey, how about once a year we sit down and we go over this as an investment and see where you're at? And that, that to me is the biggest part that we're just rolling out. And that's what I'm excited about, right? That's the, let's not just always talk about, you know, you need new carpet or all that. Let's say over this year, what do we think the value of your building is now, right? What were the, what, what did you get in cash flow? What did you get in tax savings? What did you get in appreciation? Um, you know, if, if it's something other than a single family, you know, based on cap rate, you know, however we need to value it, but give them a, a valuation once a year. Um, not because we want them to sell, but what if we look and we see there's a bunch of equity, right? Maybe you should look to expand, right? There's no better feeling for me than, than my owners that add properties. I, I love that more. If you had one single family when you started with me and now you have four, um, there's no better feeling. So that's the level of communication that I want to be proactive. Um, we don't always have time to, uh, you know, just chat about basketball or, or football, whatever you're into, right, with, with our owners. Um, you can't charge affordable prices and also staff to a point where we can talk for four hours with, with each owner. It doesn't work. So to me, we have, we have ways to communicate the, the pain points, right, which are mostly those two. Um, and then you know, let's, let's go over your portfolio, right? I'm, I'm here to handle your investment. So let's talk about that. So you, it's a good reminder that this isn't just a, a house that's losing money or, or making money, but it's, it's a long term. Want to hear more on this topic? Click the link below for the full episode of Maximizing Your Property Value.